Hey Leos, how y'all doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am back and so happy to be back with you guys. Um, took me a minute to get back here, but I'm, I'm so very pleased to be back with y'all for your September general reading here. Um, let's get right into the meditation. What else is new? I, this is really interesting. So I saw two Disney villains. I saw Jafar from Aladdin and then I, I, I think it's Scar was his name or Scarface or I can't remember. The um, Naughty Uncle Lion from Lion King. <laughs> I can't remember. Let me know in the comments what the heck his name was. Was it Scar or something? Anyway, um, and, and I saw, you know, these two characters like all in the shadows, like real, you know, archetypical villain situation. And then <clears throat> I saw them kind of go and just kind of start um, acting with a complete license to just do whatever they wanted. And I, I feel like, you know, have you ever heard that saying like, well, if they're going to treat me like the villain, then I'm going to be the villain that they think I am and really mess things up. I'm kind of seeing that trope from like, um, like a reality show where they kind of assign these certain like character types within the reality show genre and it's like there's like you know the sweetheart the playboy and then there's like the villain right and the villain's like I'm here to mess things up in this house woo like that. <laughs> like that kind of vibe I feel like for you guys what that actually is translating to is if you think about the villain archetype, it's not that they're bad people, but people will take that label and use it as an excuse to actually live how they want to, to actually come from a place of uh, divine selfishness in a way. Not all of them, you know, I, I hate to generalize, but it's like this, this complete license to live outside of the restrictions of society, what others think, right? Think about that for a minute. A lot of the heroes in the, you know, the Disney uh, canon, as it were, you know, they're, they're living in a way that's kind of like um, a bit restrictive or a bit specific and they can't not be a hero. They can't not be a hero at any given time because then they've messed up the whole thing. Whereas the villain has all this free reign to be naughty, quote, do exactly as they want to. And then if they go through a certain like evolution of soul, they can also have the freedom to go and be remorseful at the end and go, oh, I see the error of my ways. And then they have the freedom to go, ha, huh, you know what? Remorse isn't for me. I changed my mind. I'm back to me. They have the most free reign, villains do. And I feel like the medicine for you, you guys, for September is there is this beautiful invitation of free reign for you to come from a place of pure desire. Do as you will. Act as you will. Go for it. If you, I, I, I'm seeing the image of like, um, what is that like term? But it's like coming from this place of... Uh, you know, pure instinctive movement, just like those in the animal kingdom, right? There's no asking permission. There's no working within guidelines. There's no, you know, well, be smart about it now. Be like, no, I'm actually going to be, you know, passionate about it. I'm going to be instinctive about it, but, but not in a reckless way. It's just coming from a place. There's an aspect of your soul that is longing to be free and exist within a context that is without restraints or uh, guidelines or restrictions of what other people think or when is the smart time to do something, you are going after your best situation and circumstances right now from a purely instinctive place. And I feel like that is absolutely brilliant. And what I think you might find uh, within that energy is a, a deeper relationship to your wild person self. Wild woman self, wild man self. I feel like you are connecting with the wildness of spirit that has been domesticated with civilization, right? <laughs> and it's really beautiful. Oh, we have the horse on the bottom, right? Which is about a freedom of spirit, right? <clears throat> and also going with the flow and timing, right? All right. Let's see what your animal energy is for September, my Leo's. Wild abandon. That's what I'm hearing. That's that wild. Oh, 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 wow. This is really okay. So we have the butterfly here. So let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. Oh, metamorphosis, right? Metamorphosis, change, transformation. Okay. Now 
what comes before this is very painful, right? So that's why the butterfly equates to the three of swords in the tarot, right? Which is about heartache and pain. It's about a lot of, you know, tension around the heart chakra. But here's the thing. The three of swords also equates to an uh, elephant um, energy for me in the sense that oftentimes it's related to past the past, right? So there's this beautiful energy here of what you do and do not remember, right? It's like blessed are, blessed are the forgetful, right? There's an energy of that. I feel like, you know, when you think about the butterfly's process of coming into being the butterfly, right? They have these stages from the egg to the caterpillar to the chrysalis. Now in that chrysalis, they have to quite literally turn into goo, right? It's got to be quite uncomfortable, but it's worth it because they're able to come out and be the butterfly and be the... Mm. You know, I want to say most fully realized aspect of themselves, but here's the thing. Here's what I'm getting with this. I feel like in a lot of contexts, people expect you to be the butterfly. And I feel like right now for September, you're like, you know what? I'm the effing goo. I'm the goo. <laughs> I'm the goo. There's a certain, and people are like, ew. You're the goo? Aren't you supposed to be that in private and then in public be the butterfly? And you're like, no, I'm the effing goo and this is what it is. And if you can't get with it, you can just go over there somewhere. It's really interesting energy, Leo. It really, really is. But as you embrace the goo, it's like you're embracing that Disney villain aspect of yourself that is free from restraint, right? Everybody loves the butterfly, but nobody really loves the caterpillar or the cocoon, right? Interesting. What's going on? <laughs> I am so here for it. So the horse came up, you know, peeked its head out, which is chariot energy. And then you have the moon chariot here, which I'm really obsessed with. So this is the chariot um, in the traditional tarot. So Cancerian energy here. So the chariot is really beautiful. Um, this is about a Ford balanced moving energy but this is really interesting here too because how it's depicted in this deck which I love by the way I just got this deck in Glastonbury I'm really living for it um there's this aspect of the younger generation uh you know supporting and you know um facilitating the elder generation you know for it but I feel like there's an aspect here especially with the three of swords with the butterfly and the transformation and the goo I, I feel like these are two different aspects of yourself right that you are embodying simultaneously during this time there's a younger aspect of yourself that has no regard for budgeting or time or care or concern for the, you know, what's coming next down the road. I'm hearing that John Mayer song, No Such Thing. Where it's like, I want to run through the halls of my high school. I want to scream at the top of my lungs. Or the guidance counselor, you know, asks them, what do you, what do you want to do in your life? Paint it out in black and white. It's like, what? And then the, the you know, more mature, realized aspect of you that's like, oh, no, we need to sit down and consider things more carefully from a place of wisdom. I'm hearing a quote. I'm watching um, the series called Picard on Amazon Prime because I really, really love Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> next generation specifically um and there's a, a thing where one of the characters Deanna Troy says to Picard she goes I'm a lot less brave than I used to be and then he says to her well and you're getting wiser <laughs> there is this middle ground between the two and I feel like there's an aspect of you that is that is kind of tempering both energies and kind of trying it out so I do feel like there might be moments of you know extremity where you're you're going one end of the spectrum and, and then going back to the other but I feel like it's all within your arena and uh, your prerogative to do so I feel like there's a certain uh sacred shedding of um of pain or the past or how things were or how you've been but it really feels like and I say this in the best possible way like a wild animal that's been caged and wants out but I feel like that's that it's brilliant like it feels really good it feels like connecting to the wild person within you okay <laughs> wow okay <clears throat> this is really interesting so we have the seven of pentacles here. So seven of pentacles is about 
patience, timing, waiting, trusting that the seeds that you've sown will bear fruit, right? Now I want to point this out. We have a moon, right? And then this is kind of like a moon, but it's like you've, well, we'll say the sun is up here. You have two moons at different phases, right? And then you have the sun up here, right? With the rainbow and then a crow and then a dude in the middle. I feel like this month is going to be quite transformative for you. Sometimes we just have to live outside the constrictions of time or expectation or routine in order to discover what works for us now on the other side of a transformation. I feel like that's what it is. I feel like there's a certain sense of, um, what's that um, word that I'm looking for? Not just metamorphosis, but like a reinvention of self, reinvention of circumstances, right? I feel like there's a certain divine tension between who you are and where you've been and who you are going to be and where you're going. And there's a lot of moons here as well, which is very much about the unknown and your intuition and trusting that, you know, just like the moon, which has its different phases and cycles. So do you as an evolving soul, right? Just saw 11, 11 on the timer there. You know, also the crow on this guy's shoulder. Crows are very much about manifesting, you know, things, magic, messages, synchronicity, using your voice, um, balance, justice, all of that good stuff. I feel like there's a lot of signs and synchronicities and symbols that are going to be available to you during this process. But I feel like allowing yourself, it's kind of like an eat, pray, love kind of, kind of thing. But it feels a lot more, um, you know like the, what is that term in shamanic tradition where it's like um, the divine madness? There's a certain aspect of divine madness here that feels really lovely because you've also got it harnessed in a way where it remains um, focused and intentional, okay? Oh my, oh my God. Is that another butterfly for y'all? Yes, it is though. So we have spirit of cups. So this equates to the knight of cups, right? So traditionally in the tarot, the Knight of Cups is that beautiful water energy. And um, that's the dreamer, the romantic, the seer. Doesn't always necessarily finish what he starts, but he always, you know, feels really deeply about it. You know what I mean? This is about loving yourself and the work that you do. This is loving what you see in the mirror. This is loving every part of your experience, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and, and loving it all equally because you understand that it's all a part of the process of transformation. We're talking about being the goo, and we are being shown a cocoon of sorts, like a fetal, it's kind of in the fetal position within a womb of Mother Earth here, right? We're talking about being the goo, and we have this represented here for you in the context of Knight of Cups, which for me is about pursuing your pleasure and your passion during this time as well, which leads to a metamorphosis of sorts, right? Throw away the map, throw away the timetable, throw away all of that stuff. Suspend it, I should say. Suspend it now for the purpose of discovery, fun, transformation, and simply... Remember, giving yourself that license and permission to come from a place of instinct and divine selfishness. Okay? Cool. The moon chariot. Let's get a clarifier. Clarifier. Uh, Y'all, I literally cannot. I, <laughs> I can't with this. You just got it. This is a different deck. You just got three butterflies in this reading. <laughs> I literally cannot. With the moon cherry, you have the nine of cups. I, The nine of cups is about a lot of something. It's excess, right? In a great way. It's also about wish fulfillment. Are you literally telling me with this nine of cups? This, this is literally like doing the most and loving it, right? Good food, good drink, good times right? All of that good stuff, wish fulfillment, moving the chariot forward, uh, uh, sort of playing with these different aspects of yourself and enjoying that middle goo ground, right? And really living in a place where it's, it's, it's free reign for wish fulfillment and desire and passion and that divine selfishness, like I said, connecting to that wild person aspect of yourself, literally butterfly times. <laughs> You're for it, Leo. Three butterflies. All right. 
seven of pentacles. Let's do it. Um, I'm hearing, you know, as humans, we do experience doubt. We, we can kind of have times where like, am I, is this too much? Am I doing this? Did I, is it, am I making this choice at the expense of that choice? I'm hearing that the more that you're able to kind of, um, you, you will ruin your good time, right? If you overthink what you're doing from a place of fear or intellect, right? Well, if I go and do this and, and just live free, am I going to have money here when I need it for this? Something like that or there's something similar, but it, it's kind of like that aspect of like, you know, allowing to trusting your own intuition and passion and wild person self is leading you to where you actually want to be from a soul perspective and you will always have what you need. Okay. Seven of Pentacles. Ooh, love it. Ooh, eight of wands, horse. Okay. So seven of pentacles is kind of clarified by the king of swords. That is really fascinating because that's what I was literally just talking about. So king of swords, it's that beautiful, dispassionate view. He's very fair-minded. Um, he sees things very clearly. Not a big talker, right? But, but sees things very clearly. And because of that, he has really wonderful wisdom. And what's really interesting about that is we were talking about that Star Trek quote where it's like, you know, I'm not as brave as I used to be. Well, then you're getting wiser. I feel like there's a medium goo place for you guys um, within that concept. You know, also Eagle Medicine. I love Eagle Medicine. Eagle Medicine is very much about seeing the bigger picture, but also that connection you have, you know, to the upper world right? Your sense of spirit and perspective and vision and timing, right? And divinity. You know, it's interesting because this eagle has got the crown and the crown's not on the eagle's head. It's carrying it in its paw, right? And I feel like there's a certain sense of, you know, uh, taking off the reins or unleashing yourself from the burden of, and I, and I, and that's going to be different for everyone, but I, I know burden is a strong word. Let's say responsibility, releasing yourself from the responsibility of having to get it right, of having to know it all, of having to, you know, whatever your job is or situation is, you are being invited to be there, to be the person that you are for others, for yourself right now. Again, back to that as a Disney villain. You're making your own breakfast before anyone else is now. You are worrying about what you're doing before anybody else, right? The only timetable you have is yours and it's it's whatever you want it to be, okay? This time is divine. This is coming from a soul perspective. So you can either embrace it and experiencing it, experience it to the full extent that it's available to you, or you can overthink it and doubt it and go, oh God, I'm feeling like I want to be free and just let loose on the reins. But there's this other part of me that's like, is that responsible? The choice is up to you though, right? Choices. Choices. Right. Spirit of Cups. Also, look out for signs and symbols and synchronicities from the universe that are there to validate your choices around this, right? Spirit of Cups. Ooh. The Hermit, you don't say. So we are in Virgo season. We got some Virgo energy here for you. So this is really brilliant because both of these talk about, you know, going inside of yourself for wisdom and also doing you. These are not, you know, group activity vibes here that we're getting from these cards. Now, that doesn't mean you can't be around other people, but it's really about connecting in with the aspect of yourself for, you know, insight, guidance, ideas because that's the thing too it's, it's oftentimes you get your best ideas when you're not thinking about it or focusing on it that's why people say like I get my best ideas in the shower I get my best ideas when I'm on the treadmill I don't know whatever right so there's a certain aspect of like allowing yourself to be in this goo place without really knowing what's coming next that is going to align you to be open to divine inspiration as to your next best steps and that is brilliant because it's coming up in your third position right? As opposed to overthinking coming from a place of divine inspiration. And in doing so, you're going to hit the nail on the head every time moving forward. Well, not every time, but hit the nail on the head in terms of your timing around things and your choices as well, right? I feel like for someone this relates to, to work specifically. And I feel like there's others who this is like incredibly personal. Right, let's get an oracle. Remember, Virgo energy is also very much the way and things are done, uh, attention to detail, um, uh, you know, and so it's, it's really interesting, too, that we're talking about, you know, letting loose the reins and just like allowing yourself to be free and connecting with that wild aspect of yourself as well, right? All right, let's get an oracle. 
<laughs> Woo! Yes, indeed. Interesting. So we have the wise woman of Wonderland. <laughs> Integrity compromise. So this is really interesting because the wise woman of Wonderland says, as long as you're being honest and truthful, you cannot go wrong. That's all she really requires of you is that you're honest and you're truthful. I feel like part of the tonic with that is, I feel like there's either it's yourself or others that are holding you to certain expectations or certain, have certain ideas of you or there's something around that. But there's, there's this, you know, the aspect of like, actually the only person you really have to, you know, report to or be accountable to is yourself right? You know, she has this rabbit here as well. And I really, you know, rabbit energy is something that I have a very love hate relationship with. Um, you know, rabbit energy is, is very light and shadow, like all things, but on the light side, rabbit is about fertility, abundance, manifestation, right? But the shadow side of energy, uh, shadow side of rabbit is like straight fear, straight fear, one of the rabbit's, um, you know, natural predators is the eagle, by the way. So that's really interesting as well. You could be enlightened and start to see in this time um, how some of your fears might have been subconsciously affecting your decision making or choices. And, and when it's subconscious, you know, it's, it can be difficult to clock. But the thing is, it's, it's really your shadow side coming up for, you know, wanting attention, right? It's not about denying your shadow side or working against it. This is coming up in this, a lot for the signs in this round. And it's not even really about integrating it because that feels like fixing it somehow, like getting it to shut up and be quiet, right? I think it's really about working with it as much as you do the light and almost welcoming it as much as you do the light, right? It's not going anywhere. Why not, you know, give it some good time and counsel and, and bring it out into the open and say, hey, shadow side, hey, fear. Because here's the thing. If you choose not to do that, right, then what can happen is that your fears, aka your shadow aspects of yourself, can work on you as opposed to you working with it, right? Meaning... It is subconsciously affecting the decisions that you make and you don't even realize it maybe ever until much later where you go, oh my God, why was I attracting the same person over and over? Why was I attracting the same work dynamic over and over? Why do I keep ending up in this place over and over? Why am I in it right? And that often has to do when you're repeating a cycle, you know, especially when it's like a karmic tie sort of thing. It's because there's a lack of awareness as to why you're attracting it in the first place, right? And often the, the key around that is to really click in with that shadow aspect of yourself and go, hey, what am I wanting to learn that I'm not quite getting the memo around, right? Awareness is the first step, right? Not always easy, but it's important. And I feel like part of this letting loose the reins and letting go and kind of living more freely um, is an, it, it, it kind of feels like a divine tarantella. Um, the divine tarantella, so the tarantella um, is, you know, a historically a dance um, that people would do where they really work up a sweat in order to release any spider venom uh, from their veins historically. And I feel like what you're doing, you know, during this time is also very much like a divine tarantella. And I think the more that you embrace that, that, div that divine tarantella, that wild, because it's a very wild dance, the divine tarantella, right? Um, the, the more that you embrace that, I feel like the more information and insight you're going to have into your own inner workings. And from that, you're going to come out of this time manifesting very different things. And I'm not even going to say it's good or bad. Or I, who cares, right? It's, it's different things. Manifesting different opportunities, meeting different kinds of people, manifesting, you know, um, situations, places, things, and feelings that you haven't before. And that is a sign of soul growth, is when you start manifesting different things, right? And that's what we're here for, right? Soul growth, ultimately. Right on. All right, Leo. Woo! This is your September general reading. I so hope that this helped and resonated with you. Um, if so, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from y'all. Could you please let me know what I missed? What y'all been up to? What's going on? Let me know in the comments. Um, with that being said, just thank you guys as always for being here. Thank you so, so much for all of your support and my time off. And most of all, and as always, just... 
Thank you for being you and be well. Until next time.